Stromboli from 1950 starred Ingrid Bergman. And, well, going into this one, I, you know, I saw Ingrid Bergman and the title Stromboli and thought, oh, I bet this is going to be a charming love story about a lovely American journalist vacationing in Sicily and, I don't know, falls in love with a quirky yet famous Italian pastry chef. And boy, was I wrong. So the story is about Ingrid Bergman playing the character Karen, a displaced refugee after World War II who marries an Italian soldier, Antonio, played by Mario Vitale, who was discharged and who takes her to his home on a Mediterranean volcanic island named Stromboli. No pastries are apparently involved. He barely speaks a word of English, but it's a way out of her refugee camp, so she agrees not really knowing what she's getting into, that they would be heading to this island of Stromboli and one that just happens to have a smoldering volcano on it. Well, <laughs> Karen gets there. She's not too pleased. They arrive and meet some of the locals, all very authentic Italian locals, including the local priest. The island seems to be mostly abandoned with only a few people there and some very destitute looking buildings. Again, Karen's not too happy about all of this. She wants to leave, you know, what with the volcano and all. And she's apparently unhappy in her marriage as well. But Antonio, to his credit, seems initially well-meaning and trying his best here. Well, Karen starts going full Karen and complaining a lot. And she starts crying. Then she starts flipping out with the, I just want to get out. And let me just say, it's a really cheery story so far, dear viewers. She laments her plight to the local priest who appeals with her to just try to adapt to life there. Meanwhile, we cut to a scene of Antonio who is out fishing with some cheerful music. It's actually a pretty interesting scene, you know, footage of fishing. Antonio is thrilled with his haul of fish and he tells Karen all about it and she doesn't care. However, she slowly starts to acclimate, slowly. Puts up some curtains and starts painting the walls. The local women all kind of look on her judgmentally, but she tries her best. She gets a new dress made, but Antonio isn't happy to find out that there were men outside watching her. He didn't make as much money with his big fish sale as he wanted, but he promises to her that he will work harder. And maybe it's just me. I thought that the actor playing Antonio looked a little bit like actor James Franco. Anyhow, we cut to a very troubling scene later where Antonio gets a kick out of releasing his new pet ferret that proceeds to kill a little rabbit. You know how in the films they'll do that thing about no animals were harmed in the making of this film, you know? Well, clearly it doesn't apply here, and I will spare you all with sharing that clip. But meanwhile, Antonio gets a good laugh about it while Karen freaks out, as do we, the audience. You know, it's not really helping her acclimate to this environment here, Antonio, when you do stuff like that. Things get worse. As Karen is off at the sea one day with some kids and she sees an octopus and they think that she's flirting with this fisherman when she isn't. But later that night, Antonio returns home in an abusive rage and things turn really ugly. So, I mean, this film is really a downer so far. Themes of isolation, judgmentalism, abuse, and nothing at all to do with tasty Italian pastry dishes. What's going on here? Well, more fishing scenes follow, and it's actually kind of interesting, I thought, watching these Italian fishermen out in their boats singing as they haul in the fish. And these are some pretty massive fish, too. Well, Karen had decided at this point to come out in a boat to watch the fishing. And as all the fish are getting you know, brought in this huge net, she's getting splashed, and she's clearly not having a very good time here. Back at home again, Karen tells Antonio she doesn't feel well, as we find out she's three months pregnant. He's thrilled but she doesn't seem too excited about it. And the next day, wouldn't you know it, the volcano decides to erupt with rumbling and smoke everywhere. Everybody heads to their boats and they all sit out at sea, just waiting. As we near the end of the film, I'm just gonna leave the review here. Will Karen survive? Will she be able to flee the island of Stromboli and flee her possessive husband? And no spoilers. But I have to say, this is the biggest, what on earth kind of ending was that? in a film I've seen, I think, ever. <laughs> it definitely convinced me to never take a trip to a volcanic Italian island. But some closing thoughts. You know, usually I end my reviews with, this was a decent film and go check it out. But for this one, I'm, I'm maybe a little more cautious. I'm not so sure. It's worth watching for Ingrid Bergman and her performance. 
you know, as well as for those authentic fishing scenes. But that's about it. And I'm really just being honest here. I try to be optimistic and positive in all the films I review. And this one was largely a downer. And you know, it's probably just me, but I see Ingrid Bergman and it's difficult for me to separate her from the mystique of Casablanca. It's like I'm just waiting for Bogart's character Rick to show up in a boat and rescue her. And the big background of this film, you know, in researching is that Ingrid Bergman fell in love with the director during filming, Roberto Rossellini. She left her husband and daughter behind and became pregnant with him and had a son. And at the time, there was a lot of public outrage and gossip, of course. I mean, this would have been quite scandalous in 1950. And it effectively brought an end to Bergman's career in Hollywood for quite some time. And it really tarnished her image. I mean, come on, Casablanca was only a short time ago in 1942. So this type of behavior would have really impacted her public image. She eventually married Rossellini, had three kids and made six films with him. And it was interesting to read about the uncomfortable scene in the film of her walking up the side of the volcano. Ingrid Bergman apparently wore thin sandals, which did very little to protect against the black lava sands. And the director insisted on multiple retakes. So she had to repeatedly walk up this volcano through the fumes and the sulfur smell. I mean, this sounds like a really unpleasant filming condition, but got to give it credit for the authenticity. And apparently one production executive was eventually overcome by the fumes and died from a heart attack. Cheerful filming location indeed. Well, that's my thoughts on Stromboli, a somewhat dark and somber film. Ingrid Bergman is a wonderful actress and she's definitely the strength of the film. But the Isle of Stromboli is bleak and depressing. So just know what you're getting into if you decide to check it out. Well, today's film inspired me, so we're going to be making actual Stromboli today, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with the film. First, we gather our ingredients. Inexpensive pizza crust mix. Mozzarella cheese. Spaghetti sauce. Basil. Pepperonis. Olive oil. Now, when you roll it out the dough, just make sure you roll it slow. <laughs> we'll spread this out nice and thinly. And we'll do generous cheesy cheesies. And we're gonna work in some of this um, basil. Hey! So it's all good. And there. Now it is ready for the oven. Oh yeah. That looks weird. Mamma mia!